Yeah, hello and welcome to the channel. Um, as you all know, in the photography community and in the Sony shooter community, you know that Sony just released the a7 IV uh, as predecessor to the hugely successful a7 III. Um, and since I got the chance to get a copy of the a7 IV last week, um, I wanted to, to compare the ISO performance of both models here because in the internet and on YouTube, there are, of course, a lot of reviews of the a7 IV, but truly in-depth technical sensor analysis. Um, these, these reviews are still a little bit scarce. Um, and so I did want to take a look myself uh, how the, the a7 IV performs against the a7 III. I read some reviews in the internet that told uh, and told the people that um, the a7 IV is a little bit worse, um, but this was compared to the a9. I do not have the a9 and or the a92 or the a1, so I cannot compare this to these models, but um, I can, it, can compare it to the a7 III, and um, if you know what the performance against that model is, you can basically extrapolate what, what, how the model, the a7 IV, behaves against other, other competitors here. Um, I did take a look uh, at both raw images, as you can see here. Um, it's a photo of uh, my closet here um, with a few whiskey bottles inside uh, and uh, some uh, other lenses uh, and some other cameras here. Uh, and I did focus on the um, the packaging here of the a7 IV, uh, um, the nice orange color here. Um, this was the spot I did uh, focus on. Um, and basically, to tell you a little bit about the method I used, um, I zoomed in to 400% to get really, really close here um, to compare the ISO. Um, and um, basically, I went into the, the Imaging Edge RAW editor of Sony because uh, you cannot use Lightroom at the moment because there is no support for the A7 IV yet. Uh, so we have to use Sony solution. and. Um, there are disabled noise reduction for, for the raw files because what you see in here in the viewer, this is already with noise reduction applied. So this looks kind of neat, but the truth looks a little bit worse. Um, so let's take a look here. This is basically what it looks like uh, at ISO 16,000 without any raw, um, raw um, noise reduction applied. Um, and for comparing both models against each other, uh, I copied that spot uh, here, the, the orange packaging of the a7 IV, and uh, put uh, the samples into Photoshop side by side uh, to, to get a true and fair comparison between both models. And let's switch to Photoshop. Uh, we're starting with ISO 400, because at 100, there's not much to see, because both models are very, have a very good noise performance here. Uh, you do not see much of a difference, um, and this does not make sense. Um, you see a little bit of difference in color rendition. This is also what I observed. Uh, it's not much, uh, but it's definitely visible. Um, it's hard to say what's better at the end. Uh, for me, the A7 IV looks a bit more natural here, um, but at the end, they, these are raw files. You can tune them as you like and uh, can match looks very easily here. So that's not, not a decisive point. I also um, used auto exposure. so. Um, both of the cameras uh, exposed very closely uh, to the same values. There were some frames um, and some pictures here where where the A7 III exposed a little bit darker. So I did compensate for that in Photoshop. Um, basically, by doing uh, applying a smart filter to each of these 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 uh, uh, layers here and uh, use the Gaussian blur. Basically, this here. Um, and then to average out the picture, and then I do, did take the pipette uh, to see what what the, the brightness was, and then matched by by the exposure module the the basic exposure value um, for ISO 400 to uh, I think 6400. Basically, the very values were very similar. 0.1 of an exposure or 0.15 of exposure difference. Uh, 
and all the time I lifted the darker one, which usually was the the A7 III, which was a little bit darker. So I lifted that a little bit to to make a fair comparison here, um, and to actually look at the noise, uh, you can then nicely disable this this smart filter again, uh, and now have matched exposures for both patches. As you can see on the left side, the A7 IV, uh, and on the right side the A7 III. Um, the A7 IV has 33 megapixels and the A7 III 24. So this this is accounts for the side, uh, size um, difference here in both patches. So let's start with ISO 400. Um, I would say to my eye here on a 4K monitor, there's not much difference. It looks very, very much the same. Uh, I wouldn't choose any one over the other. Both, both looks uh, are very good, very fine noise very pleasing look to my eye um, if we compare it at the, the same magnification. So 400% magnification on both sides. And if we scale down the image of the A7 IV, since there's more megapixel, we can do that to get the same look. Then it looks also very similar, maybe a tiny bit better on the A7 IV side, but but the splitting of hairs, uh, basically, they, they do look the same to me. OK, let's switch to ISO 1600. Again, the same method, same exposure compensations for both patches, for both pictures. Uh, on the left side, again, the A7 IV. On the right side, the A7 III. And again, it looks very, very similar on both sides. Uh, uh, looks pleasing on both sides to me. You see a little bit more noise than on ISO 400, which is to be expected, but uh, no no model is noticeably worse than the other. Um, please keep in mind that the, the um, A7 IV has definitely more megapixels, so one would expect that the noise performance would was a little bit worse, or um, at least Sony has to do more in terms of technology and development to, to get the same noise performance since the sensor uh, has so much more megapixels and the, the individual pixel is so small and uh, this increases noise. But here I can see cannot see any, any substantial difference again at the same magnification. Again, we can scale both images to the same side, uh, size here. And let's apply this and Again, it looks very, very similar. I would would give the edge here to the A7 IV again because scaled down, it looks a bit more pleasing, more fine-grained. And on the right side, it is a little bit more blotchy, but very, very similar. Keep in mind, we are here, uh, we are at 400% magnification here. So that's very, very zoomed in here. Uh, normally, you wouldn't do that uh, usually. Even noise comparisons are made at 100 or 200%. This is 400%. So we're deeply digging into the picture here. And again, very, very similar performance. OK, let's switch to the next picture, which is ISO 6400 here. Um, again, we see an increase of noise, which is to be expected. But again, very, very similar performance here. I would say there is no difference between uh, both files here. Uh, they look very, very similar. Um, at the same magnification and again the same trick uh, do the scaling and here I would say the noise of the Sony A7 IV looks a bit finer because we scaled down the image and this is a little bit more pleasing look uh, on the right side you see a little bit more of these large color patches a um, little bit less pleasing but again splitting of hairs very very similar performance here Okay, let's step it up. Um, let's take a look at ISO, ISO 16000. And again, now you see heavy, heavy noise. Um, again, at the same magnification, I would say this is the first point where you can actually spot a difference in my high, uh, where the Sony A7 IV a little bit pulls ahead, astonishingly despite the higher, mega, higher megapixel count here, um, because to my eye, the pink blotches and spots here on the A7 III are really coming into the eye and the shadow. And it's a little bit more pleasing on the A7 IV. Um, again, um, I would say at the same scaling here, I would say the A7 IV has a little bit of an advantage. Um, uh, 
more so than at the lower ISO, ISO levels here. And again, if we apply the scaling to the same size, here it's quite obvious to my eye, I would give the A7 for at least an advantage of half a stop here, um, because on the right side, on the A7 III side, it's definitely more pronounced. These blotches are, these pink blotches are definitely more visible than here, and it's here it's more finer, it's more like a texture here, and here you can definitely see spots and see the noise. Uh, I also did a small comparison. Um, this was uh, uh, even lit or well lit section of the picture. I also did take a look at the darker portions of the picture. Again, here you can see a darker portion of the picture at ISO 16000 again. And again, very, very similar. Um, there's not much difference here on the left side here, the, the patch of the A7 IV. And again, I would say this is a par. And if you scale down the image to the same size, I would give the edge, slight edge to the A7 IV again, despite the higher megapixel count. And this is basically my conclusion. Um, I saw some reviews on the internet that said the A7 IV has worse performance than other models due to the higher megapixel count. but from my side, I cannot confirm this. Again, I also read that the, the Sony S7 IV has also a dual gain sensor and the dual gain kicks in at 12,800. I cannot confirm this. I cannot give you any, any source of that. I just read it uh, in the internet. I don't know which, which side it was. I do not remember, but I think the, some guy tested it out and said that the, the next gain level starts at 12,800. So this would confirm here that at 12,800 or 16,000 here, the the A7 IV has a little bit of an advantage because the texture and the noise texture looks more fine to me. And at um, at the side of the A7 III, it is a little bit more blotchy, more color noise, but not much, very comparable. So my conclusion is uh, it's a very good sensor. Um, uh, you, you have to keep in mind that it has uh, nine megapixels more than the a7 III. So I think this is a good success for Sony um, because the noise performs basically on par, even a little bit better, I would say. And that with lots of, of megapixels more to work with. Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, and please subscribe to the channel.